What's good, casters? This master here. I'm just strolling the park with my daughter right now. And, uh, just wanted to make a little video on what's happening with the last girl this week. We'll see if I actually post this video or the whole video. But I did just want to talk about like a few things uh, that happened with the band and limited list with the Wasp Ivy deck. Just the or Wasp Fire. Uh, the same name. So I get those mixed up sometimes. But uh, yeah, so I actually like, played Dan. I mean, if you guys recall on Discord a couple weeks back or something like that, I got to uh, play Dan, Day Drive, and uh, I was actually still working on the deck and stuff, but as like a, uh, not as complete, because I knew it was easy to just do uh, the Jataya combo to uh, just kill. So I was trying to find like an alternative to, to doing that. So it wasn't just like the same old song and dance. You know? uh, so I was like working on that a little bit, which I was doing. Whatever the evolution of Smokey was, to try to like extend a little bit more. Uh, at that time, so I was trying to like utilize Smokey, and uh, when I played Dan, I just did like probably like a 15 minute, 20 minute run off on what my deck was doing. I could not get anything, like, I literally saw like nothing in the draws. And I, at that point, you know, Drakaya is not in the deck, so I'm just focusing on other draw cards basically, and like Co Magma and Rabbit stuff like that smoky if it comes up which it didn't so i got a very weird hand and i saw like one ambrosia so i just kind of like flopped so you got to see a little bit of like what i was trying to do combo aspect wise into the wasp ivy but i didn't actually get to beat him with the combo and stuff and I had talked about like an FTK on the uh, Lestronox, Lestronox channel uh, when they were doing the whole Spark Kit thing. And I'm just like, yeah, like that's not that great. Like you could just, you know, go for the spirit deck, stuff like that. And it's not like solid going second. So I was like saying that stuff, which now, you know, the thing I'm saying is like the Drataya really doesn't matter it getting banned. That's not the card that probably should have got banned. If anything, it should have been like Exult Flare if you weren't gonna hit uh, the two cards that should have been hit, right? Because that would have just took away like future aspects of doing that so we'll see but this kind of just is going to be like a shitty leeway to the point of this month Drataya got banned Lava Lift got limited Earthquake got limited and resting on your laurels also got limited this month. And last month, Spark Hit, I believe, was the one that got banned. I think it was even last month. So it just brings me to this thing of, are we gonna just see a card get banned every month now? And I wanna know, Without, like, you know, having to deal with 
the uh, the shill channels, you know, because I am just a very rogue uh, indie game channel where I just look at games and try to see what's going on with them. And uh, I enjoy doing this because I'm creating my own game as well. So it's just nice to kind of see how they take it and go along with it. But one of the things that's gotten me worried is uh, A Drive is just going the format of like Yu Gi Oh! So, and Yu Gi Oh! can't even control their own format or their own fan base. So, I'm just curious, like, how does he plan to solve these problems that he's basically taking from other games? Like, uh, from Yu Gi Oh!, I guess, not other games, but taking from Yu Gi Oh! when they can't even solve their own problems. And going from there, I'm just curious. So, if anything, I feel like Rabbit might have needed to be on this, like, limit list, or if anything, maybe like the first semi limited on the first semi-limit list because now you're getting rid of all these things that kind of like solve for rabbit right the earthquake solves for rabbit or you can be resting on your laurels also solves for rabbit in a sense because you can resting pop the rabbit attack over most likely hopefully the other illustral they got right kind of like come back which that was like one of the nice things i kind of saw about illustrals is it had like a decent comeback potential you didn't just like lose right away um unless you just couldn't get the cards you know uh, and then they could just walk all over you but i don't see how this actually changes the format at all because rabbit just becomes that much stronger in my mind right like everyone is already down to sit on rabbit and draw cards and their out to that was these destruction effects and also at the same time uh playing the five guy plus deck which is like crabs and shit like that because it outs rabbit fairly easy so you don't see people changing path like that because of this all that is happening right now is you're limiting the access of comeback potential so it's going to just have that feeling of as soon as someone's sets up two guys and you don't draw earthquake and laurels or something like that like you're just not having a good time the rest of the game which is kind of like frustrating to even think about but I guess we can look at the positive aspect of possibly you know, in a magical dreamland that every card game creator wishes every person that played their card game lived in, right? Just Timmyville. Which maybe, right, like the answer will be uh, just be a Timmy. Like, that, like everyone's just gonna be a Timmy. You're just gonna see everybody try to play these, uh, like the three drops and stuff like that. Which could be fun, but then, right, the, then it also puts me in that vibe. If that's the case, then you would just be pushing to sell the newest set, uh, right? Like, which would be the Soul Leo, or whatever his name is, where you can foretell and hit lights and pop stuff, right? Because now you're banking on using illustral effects to be able to pop stuff. 
instead of having the cards in the deck as counter rooms to be able to pop stuff. So it would almost be like trying to sell the new sets because you're just relying on using electrical effects to pop stuff, which in my opinion just kind of makes Krakatuga even more broken because now Eruption has not gotten hit, you know, stuff like that. You don't really want to play Fruit because now you're just missing like a card that makes Fruit like decent, not even good, just decent, <laughs> right? And uh, one of the things I feel like that he should do it is going to get erratic which I don't recall him going over really what the errata was so it's going to get errata which is great you can buy some more cards and be able to play fruit that nobody plays anyway but like an example a game existing already and what I plan to do which I hate doing this because it kind of swoops on my ideas but it's chill um, like the three packs in the booster or the starter deck thing that was me I don't know if he exactly like got it from watching my video or someone that works in with him like got it from my video but like that was like a resolution that I was like hey terrible idea you opening up your own product on your channel and other people are going to be trying to make YouTube channels for your game when you already opened it because who's going to watch the video again after the creator of the game has already made a video of the product being opened right so maybe don't do that or if you're gonna do that just throw in three packs and uh that way every time someone clicks on that video, someone making a video, opening a starter deck, it will always be different. You have like a different experience. Not only dealing with like the person and their interactions with the starter deck, but the cards inside it will always be different. You know, so that that was one of my things. Boom. What do you know? Like two weeks or a month later, we got in our next Frostfall starter deck. Oh no, it wasn't even Frostfall, it was first edition. In our first edition starter decks, we're going to add three packs, which I'm like, cool. Like, he used my idea. Like, that's cool. It just shows me, like, my ideas are good and useful. Right? So, it's not the worst thing. But, uh, yeah. So, to go on to this ramble of what I mean, and it will be funny to see if it actually happens later on, which he would just have to scramble and change his mind, which would be a wishy-washy thing, which is already kind of wishy-washy thing, because we've already not even a year into it, I would say, like, everyone wants to count Kickstarter and all of this stuff, but this game hasn't even been out for a year, in my opinion, at least, and we already have two bands and three limits. But we also have three sets. Um, so, he is trying to pump stuff out. I get it. It's hard to see everything, but you have to test and you have to grind and you have to be, you know, kind of a troll when you're doing your playtesting. You gotta have people that actually play or you have to actually play because, I mean, there's some stuff that's nice and you like it to be a challenge and you want there to be a best deck so there is like you know that uh, monster in the closet that everyone teams up against to try and solve in the meta but you don't want it to be everyone gives up trying to do that right it's just like yeah it's not even worth my time kind of like what's Yu-Gi-Oh that right yeah, it's not even worth my time trying to deal with that fucking monster. I'll just let it sit there in the closet, thinking it's the shit. 
until uh, it gets basically rotated out of existence through, you know, time and shit. But yeah, things kicking it. We're just rambling. We're gonna keep on rambling. My daughter's just sleeping, having a nice little walk in the park. But so then with all of that, right? Because I like Illustrials. Uh, I hate that it's a life decking game. You can troll, scream at me, whatever you want. Saying it's not a life decking game, it is a life decking game. The spirit system is not interesting, it's pretty stupid in my opinion. And uh, it's one of the main problems with the game. Like, you're going to have a really hard time solving any problems that you come across just by how the foundation of the game is designed. I haven't even finished watching Swolak's video trying to be like a teacher in a class, but I feel like that's what he's kind of nicely trying to get across to everybody, that just the foundation of the Lush Rules doesn't work. So before I go into the other point I wanted to make, I wanted to make the point that if he could have solved this by doing archetypes instead of banning stuff. Because really what the problem is, is there's really no point of playing anything except for a board of queens. You don't need pawns, you don't need knights, you don't need a king, you don't need any of those pieces when you can just play a 40 card deck of all queens that do the most mobility in the game, right? Which, he basically tried to solve that by removing just generic mobility that every deck could use. Right? When is... Which he could do that, right? He removed all the regular generic stuff. He's gonna move into arch type, type stuff. We're gonna see more things like bears. Uh, which maybe bears is the best now, who knows, but, I'm curious to see what the format is going to turn into, just based off of these changes, right, because I still don't think seeing Lobolith getting hit to one, is value enough to even playing the Divine Ruins, honestly. I mean, and in that case, right, they're gonna just play Demeter and Zeus. So, it's, you know, it's not like it helped every deck that wants to play a Divine Ruin, it just helped uh, Demeter and Zeus, Earth and Lightning decks, which, I'm just throwing, it's kind of funny, right? Because we just hear Coder say, um, Imperix, right? It's, it's kind of dog water because you can't utilize him because there's not a good one or two fire drop to play. Like, I remember just when he, I heard him say that, I'm like, what, what's, like, they have the most jacked two drop fire card talking about. And then, just to hear, like, almost everybody say, Hephaestus is, like, a shit card. Like, that card sucks. Like, there's no reason to play that card. And it's just like, it, you know exactly why you can play that card. What are you talking about? And then look at, the, they have a perfect reason to play it, and then they even play a brick. Right? Brick because they're like, oh, I can search out one less card in my deck, which is kind of like decent, right? When you're, uh, when you're going to uh, shuffle it back into your hand with whatever the, the magical balance basically. So, who 
just super funny. But those are, uh, those are things that have been said in the community that people just kind of listen to. And that's, like, very common, uh, to be honest, in a lot of card game YouTube spaces. It's just, you know, a lot of people have their thinking done for them. And, uh, I think this game is just too much of that. Like, people barely think for themselves. And then, if you do bring up something, they kind of just talk shit about it. Right? That, uh, you know, the cryo blast is trash. But then it's not trash. <laughs> like, uh... I don't know. I feel like almost like what, what like like any good card basically. I feel like they besides Ash Rabbit, they've said that it's bad in the beginning, and it's just like uh, I feel like you don't know what you're talking about, or you're trying to create this format or something to do something. It's uh not in the player's best interest and stuff like that, which uh. I hope this doesn't come off as like hate and shit. I'm just a card slinger. I love playing cards. Uh, I basically I don't get credit for it, obviously, based on all the videos that happened the other day. But yeah, I don't get credit for getting the the fire FTP deck, even though it's like oh a YouTube rumor. Oh, like because that's what I said. The Lester Match channel. Like, I have been hinting to the deck. I feel like I've played. What is his name? Like Cable? Something like that? I mean, why do I want to say his name is Cable? But the. The dude with the beard, basically. Uh, like, I played him. I think he played against my fire deck. And then I played Dan. I actually beat him with my blue eyes deck. That was kind of cool. So, it's the blue eyes deck. It's just like a uh, turbo cryo gun deck. Which I guess that doesn't count because you probably have to beat him in person. But he also did quit before I got a chance to like finalize my attack and shit. So it was kind of like a Joey Wheeler versus Merrick kind of moment where it's like I just pass out or whatever before I get to finish off Merrick but technically I won. So I don't know. That was kind of like uh, maybe you just got overweighting and he wanted to play another game so I didn't really take it like super personal but I thought I was going to get like an A drive card or something. I was like oh shit. But then he just kind of left. I think I tried to show him my uh, fire deck again or something. Because there was like a good second I was using that the fire deck. And uh, yeah, I just... I moved on from the Jutaya one because I just, you know... That's kind of just like a poser build, in my opinion. Because I fucking hate decks and cards that do everything for you. There's just no skill in that. There's no skill, and this card lets me draw unlimited amount of cards because I'm already going to play this other card. That shit doesn't matter. And then now we're in like a good amount of the video, or uh, video, sorry. A good part of the video. And like one of the things I kind of wanted to just bring up, right, is like I kind of like illustrious. I wanted to play it and stuff, and uh, the whole sales pitch of it, right, is like, oh, it's like old school Yu-Gi-Oh. And then, uh, which is like cool, right? It sounds cool, it's like old school Yu-Gi-Oh, it's like, oh, I liked old school Yu-Gi-Oh. But then, what happened is I actually started, like, at my shop, I just started playing people old school Yu-Gi-Oh! And I was just like, wow, this is way better than Elestrals. 
Why would I play Elestrals? All it does is remind me of old school Yu-Gi-Oh! And I could just play old school Yu-Gi-Oh! Which actually it's a lot easier to play old school Yu-Gi-Oh! than it is to play Elestrals. For two reasons, at least. There's probably multiples, but the cards are easier accessible. They're on TCG Player, they're cheaper. They've been out for like over 25 years. So it's quite easy to get some of the cards. Right? At least enough to scrap together a janky old school deck and work your way up and just chill and play. Um, okay, that might have been almost all of them in one. I didn't really separate them very well, did I? Um, whatever, like a second reason. Uh, yeah, right, more people play and know about Yu-Gi-Oh! So it's easier to find someone to play against. The cards are more available. Uh, you have more of a connection to the old school Yu-Gi-Oh! cards because of the anime. So, yeah. Which, that's one of the problems, right? Making a card game. I think that's one of the main problems. Like, MetaZoo didn't get a lot of eyes because it was just like, oh, this is just magic. Why would I play this when I can just play magic? Which I hated. At least the majority of the community for magic just did not like playing magic. Um, and stuff like that. So, to me, it was like, cool. I was like, cool, this is actually like a game I would give a chance. Which could be true for people, like they don't want to deal with the, the sweaty Yu-Gi-Oh players that play Yu-Gi-Oh, so Lustrous could be good for it, but you know, sweaty Yu-Gi-Oh players don't really play old school Yu-Gi-Oh, which is just a Lustral, so that's kind of a thing. But I do want to say about the, the lore, I think the lore is pretty cool, I think he's doing like a good job on it. I'm like kind of doing like a similar thing but I kind of like how we just did like a video you know and voiced over the uh what was going on and stuff and just had like a picture and stuff so I thought that was like kind of cool very budget cheap way to get it done and stuff and I, I kind of like that because my thing was like uh, I'm gonna have like a digital manga Right, that people can read on the website or it's going to be a physical manga which is just going to cost me more money after already spending the money to get the art done or the story and stuff like that so I kind of do like it uh, it's, a, it's a good idea and I, I think the story is like chill it's cool it's good it's good shit uh, the only thing is it's like so much like Pokemon. Like I literally was just like, oh, this is just like Pokemon episode, unplug, plug back in, you know, kind of deal. So like that was like, eh. But I get the idea, right, of trying to, uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna deny I don't do this either, but like trying to have some of the like, uh, the security of being familiar with shit, right? Like, people feel more secure when they're more familiar about stuff, and then it's not like a total left field, like, what is this, I'm just not gonna touch it kind of thing. So, like, yeah, that's, like, good. But it was just too much. Like, the stone is just, like, a pokeball, right? When... I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. So maybe we'll see what the difference is with the stone and stuff. I guess like certain people can only be champions chosen by like the gods or whatever, right? And that's why that kid, Nico or something, got given that stone. So that was, you know, interesting enough. And I'm glad it's the, like, the main character dude got Nep Nepra, 
which I'm still waiting on that Necro plushie. I'm pretty sure it hasn't came out yet. I'm still waiting on that Necro plushie. He literally was like, hey, what plushie do you guys want made? And I was like, Necro. Nothing. Which I know there's like plenty of people he's like has shouting at him to do certain stuff, but why wouldn't you do Necro? technically should be the mascot of the game in my opinion i don't know who else would qualify for that right unless you make a more generic one or i guess it could be like centarbor but which that goes into a little bit more like where where the lore is so what he just needs to do basically is tying the lore with the archetype which is great for him to take right because that's basically what Yu-Gi-Oh does they what they're going to do i guess right they're doing they do the lore based on the archetypes to make a certain universe thing happen and apparently they're going to start making the animation like animate based on that which is pretty cool if you guys aren't familiar with any of the Yu-Gi-Oh lore definitely check some of that out but so that could just be a good thing that he could go with. Which, you know, now you were just doing, at that point, kind of what MetaZoo ended up doing, right? Where you're creating archetypes, or basically, they didn't make archetypes in MetaZoo, really. But they made cards that just made the beginning boss monsters. Some of the most powerful cards and they were already some of the most powerful cards i just say going to make them the most powerful cards because like the first boss monsters are kind of like trash in the last rolls and i feel like a lot of people know that but just imagine a centarbor like arch type kind of deal that just does everything like it would be like in the lore like how centarbor is like threatened you know, like imagine there's like some way of like turboing out Centarbor and then it just being like you can actually call upon and play other Centarbors during battle and get in multiple attacks and kind of have like a finisher. And that's what's gonna make like Alestral's pop a little bit more is having a finisher. Right, that like all the finishers are just trash. Even if they're meant to be finishers, they're just trash. So if you can just focus on that, and uh, then you wouldn't even need to do these bands and limits because it would just be a waste of your time playing like jank stuff, right? Like the Dratia or the Wasp Ivy because you're just like solidly doing something else. As long as you can kind of like stun them a bit, which there's not gonna be hand traps apparently, even though there is one hand trap. I, it's just like a mess. Every time I try to think of it, it's just like a fucked up pretzel. Um, so we'll see what ends up happening. But I do wanna just know people's opinions about my rant about what the format's gonna do do you think it's going to change because of this or it just instantly makes every deck worse and makes fives better right because now like you removed small guys or whatever the fuck you want to call it you removed that because now they have no way of removing board like in spot removal so they can't like function anymore because healing you only does does so much because you attempt to like eventually want to poke with the fucking small nobody guys to try to take the lead or finish them out because they drain their resources and their spirit so much but, uh, yeah. well, let me know what you guys think the format's gonna be boom bat's gonna be better I said Boom Bat was going to be good. Honestly, uh, Majesty. 
just seems like it's still the best deck. I already said it was the best deck. Uh, there's just that random shit where they were like, ah, oh, no, it's not the best deck. Because Boom Bat, right, being soldiers all like, Boom Bat just takes care of Majesty with Bag of Winds. I'm like, nah, it actually doesn't, but I'm sorry about that. You know, and uh, it wasn't like a direct thing, right? It was indirect. But he basically is on the thing that Dense Fog Boom Bat removes uh, Majesty Bag of Winds, right? Which, in the chain, it would, right? If you go Boom Bat, Chain, Dense Fog, in that magical sense, it would. Um, but then all someone has to do is Gorgon Gaze or Dense Fog, preemptive Boom Bat, right? Because it's like, I play Boom Bat, cool. In response of Summon, I do Dense Fog. And then they're sitting there with a Boom Bat. Hopefully, yeah, uh, putting it in defense mode. But uh, they're also not, like, utilizing the, the sense of, like... They started to. Honestly, they started to. But, like, Poseidon wasn't valued as a divine uh, ruin. With, they're all like, oh, it's just not as good. So, yeah, you kind of need Atlantis, right, to be able to have that demeanor effect with Poseidon. And it's more of a investment, right? There's nothing... You know, like that, I mean, you could say all your points, but yes, you're aware of that. But in the end, right, if it does connect and shit like that, you are literally just smacking for like four to five damage in the face. And, you know, someone only can take like a couple of those, I feel like, so... I think Poseidon is just getting a little undervalued, but now it's starting to get a little bit more valued, but at the same time, they're just focusing on using, uh, like, small guys and stuff like that, which I just, I still think Majesty is better than Chronodile or whatever you want to call him, the alligator. He looks dope. I mean, Galaxy, I think, is sick. Cool, but Chrono Dial definitely has that more like aggressive, cool look, kind of like for Alligator. So, yeah, he's definitely sick, right? And um, he does like the same thing, right? Except you don't need Poseidon. That's the only thing that's better about him, is you don't need Poseidon. But the thing about Majesty is that you don't need like six spirits or some shit on him. Right? You're just like, bam, my dude is chilling. He can't be affected by electrical effects. Which, now look at that. Like, you're almost like not even trying to get Bag of Winds now because what, there's like two cards that affect Majesty, right? Um, that are like Invoke Ruins, right? It will still be affected by the Counter Ruins. So that you do kind of want to play Bag of Winds. But now you can also just play you know, the uh, Trident of Poseidon and stuff. So it's just like increasing the amount of cards that are going to just do this shit for you. Because Trident of Poseidon didn't work as well because someone could just earthquake your ass. And that's the thing. How likely is someone going to earthquake your ass if they only have one earthquake in the deck? Right? You have one out. That's like, I mean, I don't think there's ever been a time, but that's like freaking crushing hammer or freaking fissure being at one. Like, I get it, dark hole being at one, yeah, it wipes out the whole board, but like, what are you gonna do? You're gonna come out with a dark hole in Elestrals and put Earthquake back to three and then put this thing automatically at one, like a month later or something? 
right? Because, I mean, how long has Daybreak been out? And honestly, like, none of the cards in Daybreak really, like, affect all the shit that has happened. They're technically all set one cards. So even though, like, which is crazy, right? Because the set one cards aren't that good, but they still are the best cards available in the game. So there's plenty, there's plenty of freaking, uh, I can't think of the word, but there's plenty of power creep space to scroll along, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Like, the game is still new. Ideas just need to be more creative with the creation of the card, instead of it just being like a generic design in the card, right? And then it's, it's either a generic design in the card or an overinvestment where it's not valued because there's just generic cards that just cost less investment than to do. So that's pretty much all it's at. It's just people that invest into a playing style. They just need to see the play payout, and they will stop playing Gemini Beatdown, basically. Or Craps, right? Which that's, that's what I think everyone just kind of wants. And then, uh, more unique styles, but then it's just the arch type also were bad for you guys. So right, that's where you have to, uh, you have to see where it is, but you can have more control over the arch types in the sense of there's less of them at the beginning, so they're gonna be a little bit easier to watch, just like anything is going to get more difficult after having like 20 years of cards come out, right? But at least it'll be a little bit easier to watch, but you're gonna have to still keep an eye out on making sure that there's not generic cards within the archetype that just make another archetype completely broken. So we'll just have to see how that goes. And this video is way too long. My daughter's definitely been sleeping a while, so that's good. Um, that's what I want to say. I feel like I got to ramble a lot. Uh, but yeah, Frostfall and Daybreak have come out, and I just don't really value any of those cards. I brought the Corio Scorch starter deck just because Boss Dragon, basically. I was like, okay. We got another dragon boy, so I'm good. I'll go grab this thing real quick. Um, and I'm kind of just sad on that. I, I don't know where you guys kind of stand. Like, my deck didn't even get hit. I guess technically I got to take out a resting, and I got to take out two earthquakes, which I guess I can just play a lava lith instead of the resting. And then, shit, I don't even know. I guess I could try to just squeeze in some boom bats in there, I guess. I don't really know. I just, I feel like it doesn't change that much. It's just kind of just, eh, I don't know. I don't know. I just want to know what other people kind of are thinking. And just don't be a shill about it, I guess. Come on. Just don't be a shill about it. You guys played card games, hopefully you know, what irritates you and bugs you and stuff, like, let's get some honest opinions here so that we can make the game good again, which I think a lot of these, uh, Yu-Gi-Tubers, basically, like, I don't know what else you want to call them, because as soon as they don't see the value in Elestrals, they will just be Yu-Gi-Tubers, and they were just Yu-Gi-Tubers, so just have to see what that is. Uh, but yeah, I just, I, I don't think 
there's like an honest feedback in the community and stuff. And I feel like it should be like, you know, welcome. I don't want to welcome in in my game. You know, if I'm fucking up and doing a shitty job, I'd sure as hell like to know about it so I can fix it instead of uh, being lied to in my face and being cussed at behind my back. So, yeah, I don't know. I do kind of like the game. The game's kind of terrible, though, in my opinion. Right? It's... People have said it, like, it's boring. It's honestly, it is boring. There's not that much excitement to it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just, I don't know. At least when you play, like, old school Yu-Gi-Oh, you're just like, I play one card in face down and two cards, or whatever, you know, like, I summoned my alpha, the magnet warrior, and said, two cards, face down, and end my turn, and that alone is just, like, entertainment and fun for people, and Illustrious just doesn't have that, it doesn't have that, like, thing to draw off of, which, it would be sick to, like, right, I'm, like, after watching the, the lore video, I'm just like, damn, can I make a freaking uh, Sonic Core deck? Can I make a Pirawat deck? Which in Pirawat is deck? You just have to play it right and people are playing it wrong. But also, I guess it doesn't really matter because it's just other things are easier to play. You just can be at that point. That's anyway, like if you, if you come with a good deck idea, right? It's still a Timmy idea, which technically even this uh, Fire FTK deck, right? Even though it got banned and stuff, because it eventually will just be broken. Even though Tertia was the one that got banned, which I think just removes any kind of creativity for those kind of combo players, because now you just can't play combo. Right? I mean, right? I mean, you could, but your tie just made it a lot easier for that, like, meta combo player that gets told what to play. Um, so, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. I still think you just go fire. And, uh, like, that deck is still the same, just throwing some cryo scorches. And you just try to hit them for five at the end. Hit them with eruptions. And uh, you hit them with the boss ivy. So nine, right? Five, fourteen. So that means you just have to get two energy on the wasp fire. Uh, and you disenchant three. That burns for six. That's twenty. I don't know what else you want from me. Right? I don't understand how the deck still just doesn't work. Even though it got hit. So, I mean, you could just play the deck like that. And, uh, you know, there really wouldn't be a reason to play crabs. Which it was just like, it's like a weird thing, right? I had this idea, and I'm like, wow. You know, which was the goal. I was just like, ah, oh, there's so many flaws in this game. I'm going to break this guy's game just to prove a point here that there's flaws in it and then I kind of started liking the creative spot side too you know? I was like oh I made like a little cryo scorch or cryo burn blue eyes deck and uh, you know, I didn't see value in showing people how to break the game but now I think a lot of people are actually just going to get an ick paste dealing with two bands, one after another, 
possibly another one next month. Some limits that actually are your only outs to dealing with the most toxic, boring deck in the whole right now. So it's crazy, I don't know, I'm just trying to sell my Illustrials right now, I guess, but... Which I was selling my Illustrials to buy more Illustrials, to have in the shop, to host tournaments, and help people build decks. So now I don't think it's a thing, but definitely, definitely gotta pick up those Halloween, Necros, Lazarus, and Tricorn. really want those, but... I'll just get them off of somebody that doesn't value them and wants to get rid of them. So, not really, that's the problem, right? That's the thing. It's like, he's not making as much money as he would like, I feel like. Just because it's not worth it for someone to buy a box. That's kind of what it is. Right? There's the pull rates, the parts inside the box. Don't incentivize the players enough to buy the box. Right? Which I know you don't want to be like a living card game or whatever. But making it so that someone buys a box and they get a majority of what they want is ideal, in my opinion. Alright, that way. Oh, you awake? Alright. I guess we're ending there but yeah let me know what you think probably not even gonna post this video peace out